Where are we? I'll tell you where. Someplace chilly. A place where creative geocaches instinctively flock like the salmon of the Fraser. I'm talking about New Westminster. Uh, yes, folks, welcome back to the city of New Westminster. I am here on the Fraser River, and today we're going to find some geocaches, but we're also going to do a brief history on this city. How it came to be, why it came to be, what is important about this area, and the historical context behind all of that. And stay tuned throughout this episode, we'll take a deeper dive into all of that. But right now, let's go looking for a geocache. And you know what? I'm thinking. Because there seems to be a boat theme in the past few episodes that I've filmed, let's go take a water taxi to Queensboro. <laughs> Gotta have my Timmy's. So here we are at one of the Samson vessels. Uh, this is an old steam-powered stern wheeler that was responsible for clearing dangerous snags in the Fraser River. So it was a very important ship back in its day, and it is also the last intact snag removing stern wheeler um, in Canada. Queensboro. Now Queensboro is also part of New Westminster, but it is on the same island as Richmond. And for those who are uh, not quite familiar with Vancouver geography, Richmond is the same uh, city that is just a hop, skip and a jump from the Vancouver airport. Uh, right now we are actually on an island in the Fraser River. It is still January right now at the point of filming. so. As you can see, we have a lot of snow still. We got ourselves a water taxi that I just took. There it is. Uh, just uh, going back to New Westminster right now. So uh, I will be taking that back over to the mainland uh, once I am done here. Let's look for this geocache. I don't know, do you see something out of the ordinary? <laughs> Interesting. Another creative geocache. Shout out to Mr. Hippo for hiding it. Uh, it is a one of many creative hides here on Queensboro. So when you find yourself here in New Westminster, uh, in the Queensboro area, go ahead and look for some of Mr. Hippo's caches. The SS Komagata Maru arrived in Burrard Inlet from Hong Kong on May 23, 1914. The ship was carrying 376 British Indian passengers who were challenging Canada's racist continuous journey regulation. This law only allowed entry to those migrants arriving directly from their country of origin. As there was no direct route from British India at the time, the law was a deliberate action by the government to deny entry into the Dominion of Canada, a subject nation of the British Commonwealth. For 62 days, Canadian officials held the passengers on board the ship and did not permit them ashore. After two months of constant surveillance, legal challenges, physical struggles, and with the passengers running desperately short of food and water due to the government's inadequate provisions, a stalemate ended on July 23rd. The Canadian warship SS Rainbow escorted the Comagata Maru out of Canadian waters as the ship set off back to British India. There, British Indian forces greeted passengers with hostility and violence. So indeed, Canada has a very dark history. Some parts of our, of our history are not pleasant to hear about, but it 
is important, that we understand them, we know them, and we recognize them, and we know not to repeat them. Back on the QBQ ferry, heading back to the U.S. Minster. Westminster is located on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples. The territory is unceded, meaning First Nations never surrendered their land through treaty or other means. Before British Columbia joined Confederation in 1871, and therefore joining Canada, there were two British colonies, Vancouver Island and the mainland of British Columbia. New Westminster was the capital of British Columbia, and Victoria was the capital of Vancouver Island. During the Fraser River and Caribou Gold Rushes, New Westminster was the mainland's mercantile centre and transportation hub. However, the city never displaced Victoria's overall dominance due to the latter's easier access to ocean shipping. In 1868, the Legislative Council chose Victoria as the permanent capital of the recently united colonies of British Columbia and Vancouver Island. It seems like a pub has found me. Let's go inside, shall we? I'm gonna order the Cajun Spice Wings because they are so good here. All right. So after that, guess what we're doing? We're going for one more geocache, at least one more geocache. And uh, I used to go to college here, Douglas College. Studying political science here, back in the day. One thing to know about New Westminster is that it's built on a hill. And one of the reasons why New Westminster was the capital of British Columbia was more of a defense mechanism in case the Americans decided to attack from the Fraser River. So, anyway, they literally had an uphill battle. Can Keys 94 do it? We're gonna find out. One more geocache, folks. One more geocache. Oh well. The snow was too strong. The snow defeated me, sadly. I will return, mark my words. So folks, I wanna take this time to thank you for watching this episode of Keys 94's Geocaching Avengers here on YouTube. And if you like what you saw, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button because there will be more episodes to come geocaching adventures and adventures beyond geocaching for all of you to see and uh, thanks very much for watching going up in Pier Park there is an elevator that takes you down to the waterfront so Going up. Press the button. I broke the elevator. <laughs> there we go, up we go, up we go, up we go. Fraser River on that side. And the bridge here. All right, let's go. No, screw it. I'm gonna do it for this thing. 
we're going to try to find this geocache at night in a New Westminster neighborhood. So, come along. <laughs>